I'm Kelly Thorne, Fort Berthold Extension Agent, and I am here with Chris Springwall, the um, NDSU Livestock Extension, Extension Specialist, and we're talking a little bit today about calf aid, um, learning about age and source. So Chris, if you could just tell us a little bit more um, how calf aid got started and just a little bit about it in general for producers who have maybe never heard of it. Calf aid is an age and source happening across the country. It isn't just age and source, but USDA has a lot of third-party programs. And what that means is that USDA reviews and helps develop these programs and then comes back and validates that you follow the program and the procedure. So CAF Aid is just one of many programs that has actually went through that process. So in the end, CAF Aid is a program that we function as a third-party verifier. We being the North Dakota Beef Cattle Improvement Association, which is kind of the, the home group for CAF Aid. Mm -hmm. So you kind of mentioned there's many different choices for producers. It was a natural base for a source and age verification program. So, but the bottom line is it's local. Mm -hmm. it's, it's n all third-party programs are accurate and correct. There, there's no difference in them. Why don't you um, tell us a little bit then about the tags that you use and show us how they work exactly. We've got, you know, in the RFIDs there's a traditional button tag which you can go get mm -hmm. out in, in the store. No, they're just a button. Currently, we're, we're utilizing, if you, if you want our newer trials, and kind of got to remember agent source verification is evolving. It, you know, the techniques and that that are available today weren't available a year ago. So, um, so what we've done is taken a visual ID mm -hmm. with a visual number on it and combined that tag with the RFID. So the RFID tag is actually on the back of the um, tag. So now when this tag goes in the calf, the visual ID and the RFID match. Once this tag is placed in the calf, then um, we come back and you know the tag is in. Then we come back and we use pre-printed cabin books, and this is kind of a trial for us, but but we're kind of excited about it. That that you take your cabin book and you open up, and this tag will match the number that's already pre-printed in the cabin book. So the next step is the producer simply fills in the date of birth or whatever other information they have. They don't have to fill in a lot, but they do have to fill in the date of birth, place the tag in the calf, close the calving book, and when they're done calving, then those calves that are in this book are agent source. Mm -hmm. They still have to send it in to uh, make sure it's validated in that, but that, that's not a lot of work, and they'd send it into the North Dakota Beef Cow Improvement Association. Mm -hmm. So, so a pretty simple very, process very for producers, simple, yeah. mainly uh, get those tags in and Date of birth is one of the main things yep. they have to have in their calving book. Um, and you said you'll have these tags actually um, for producers, right? You'll have so many of them, or if they want, they can go purchase some themselves. Low frequency tags, yeah. All right. And and these would be available. Hopefully. What are are there any other costs involved, Chris? <clears throat> or what are producers? Um, we mentioned the tags, which they can get from you or purchase their own if they need to, but they get the calving book through you guys. Um, are there any other costs involved? And then are producers seeing returns? You know, is this agent source worth their time and money if they're sticking it into it? Agent source is certainly worth the time. It is. The effort, the effort is better paperwork. You need to make sure that, that the appropriate forms are following, that, that it's not just from the ranch. Agent source, we agent source at the ranch. Mm -hmm. So. That documentation, not the documentation itself, you retain that, but the forms that tell the people buying the calves that they are agent source have to follow not only through the stockyards or the, the auction barns, but to the truck or all the way to the feed yard. Mm -hmm. Once they get that, things are, are good, you know. So um, once that's done, it takes time. Now, is it a monetary cost? Not near as much as it, as it is time. So you know, you have to value your time. Accordingly. Um, we will see reports. We used to see reports of twenty to twenty-five dollars. Now you're seeing reports of twenty-five to thirty-five, and even on up to you know thirty-five to fifty dollar advantages on the rail for an agent sourced carcass. Mm -hmm. Now remember that's on the rail. So when a feedlot wants to put together a package of agent sourced cattle, 
That's the kind of dollars they have to work with to go purchase those cattle. That doesn't mean they're going to give you an extra $50 for your calf, but they're going to bid more aggressively on those calves. So, so it is important. It has an impact. It's hard to measure like any of our programs over the years. It's hard to measure. But, but you can rest assured that there, there's a positive influence on the value of that calf. And, um, you know, even if you, if you, two bucks a hundred weight on a six weight calf is 12 bucks. So, um, that, is that worth it? Okay, now we have Donnie Tibor with us, and she's the NDSU Research Specialist with this Dickinson Research Extension Center. And uh, Donnie, why don't you just tell us a little bit about some of the requirements producers are going to um, have to be in charge of when they sign up for this. What's it take to get in with CAF aid? Okay. Um, as a producer decides to come in uh, and be a participant in CAF aid, we ask that they fill out a registration form. Those registration forms can be found on our website, or they can call my office and receive a copy of the registration form. I'll send it out to them. And um, we ask that they have a calving book. Mm -hmm. And um, as soon as they fill out their registration form, we ask that they send that back in with a copy of their calving book. And it will go through an approval process with the CAF aid members. And then we notify the producer that they are um, eligible to participate in the CAF aid program. Mm -hmm. And so that approval process, is that just making sure they have everything they need to join it or what, what all is involved there? It's making sure that um, we can provide the source and age verification for their cattle and um, from beginning to end and not have to worry that um, you know we're not sourcing and aging um, purchased cattle mm -hmm. or something like that. So there's a series of questions on the registration form that we would like them to fill out and then supply us with their calving books so we can see what their process is. Mm -hmm. And I know you had mentioned something earlier too um, about an on-site visit for those first-time producers that are signing up. Mm -hmm. An on-site visit would be um, something that we may have to do for um, potential participants and the reason for that is that the USDA comes back and they audit me in the fall and uh, they're going to audit the process that I have told them that I was going to do. So. Um, what we do is I would come out, I'd sit down with the producer, I'd just visit with him, take a look at the calf book, um, bring the registration form, and double check all the information that was put on, that was entered um, or presented by the calf aid um, participant. Mm -hmm. so. so, sounds like a pretty simple process, Very mainly simple. get the registration form from you and yes. then uh, keep uh, keeping your records in that right. calving book on hand. That is correct. All right. Well, thank you very much today. Oh, you're welcome. And these tags right here are the ones that you would get through the CAF aid program, each producer. Um, so this would go in just one animal. You can see the numbers match up. And on the back side of this one is your electronic ID on it. This one doesn't have anything on the back. And so if you want to put your own number on there, say, um, to match your cows or whatever, you can write on that tag. So one would go in one ear and one in the other. If you have any questions on CAF aid or the Dickinson Research Extension Center's upcoming project, you can give them a call at 701-483-2348, extension 105, or go ahead and give me a call at 701-627-3446, whether it's questions relating to CAF aid or another agent source program. As marketing cattle evolves and changes with more branded products, niche markets, and documentation, you'll want to consider for yourself if the investment in agent source verification will increase the value and marketability of your very own calves.